is a win for the Misfits in game number three. The Misfits will elect to choose Sky Temple, which means that uh, first pick will be going to the Plain Ducks. Okay, now this is where I can say now Misfits is prioritizing map. Oh, wait. No. No. It's, no! No, no, no. It's okay. You'll get it. One you'll get day. it. I believe in what? you. Okay, here. Let's go over the rules for you at home. If a team loses, they get to choose between picking the map or taking first pick. And then the opposing team gets the other thing. Kolaris, we good? We good? I've thrown my papers on the floor. <laughs> I'm having a hissy fit, all right? A hissy fit over here from Kolaris as he tries to figure out the rules. Uh, no, 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 man. It's, I've been there before. It's, it's all good. It's all good. We're, that's, why, that's why I'm here. You and I, we support each other. Thanks. We're, we're going we're gonna to climb to the top. I need the support. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but what support will they get here on this battleground here on Sky Temple? The bans will occur for our two teams now. The playing Ducks will get first pick, so they get also get the first ban. Do they ban on Tassinor, or are they actually ban something different and try to get it for them here on the right side? Now, the correct <coughs> choice, it feels like, is to ban Ragnaros yes. and put the burden of ban on Misfits for Tassinor. Yes, completely agree. Uh, it feels like uh, when it comes to Europe, our bans are pretty much sorted in this first rotation. It's a little bit more varied over in HGC North America. Uh, but Europe has their has their likes and dislikes and they stick with them very, very strongly. Zeratul is gonna be the focus. So I'm expecting them to try and look to pick up Ragnaros for that first pick. So yeah, they take out Zeratul. Now, to something to know is that we've seen this in the past, actually, where we thought that the Plain Ducks would go the route of the Ragnaros, but they actually let it go through anyways and gave True. it to the Misfits. And that was the same game with the Tassadar. So if they have a game plan, now is definitely the time to show it if they don't pick up the Ragnaros with the Misfits ban. Mm -hmm. So this is Misfits just they have some time pull. Now they're thinking, why is it the Zeratul? Uh, obviously, they were always going to lock in that Tassadar band there. Uh, and they're thinking about, is anything a little bit more weird going to come out, I suppose, on this side? But Moment of truth. Plain Ducks has gone for the Vala multiple times in their first slots. I don't mind if they go to Hacker, even. I well, think that as much as you know, giving Ragnaros would be kind of crazy. I think Dahaka is still very strong here. I think Falsa could be a thing too. True. We've true. seen Falsa bans yeah. in the past from uh, Misfits. So playing Ducks obviously is wrong with that hero. If they're going to go for it, I think they go for their Vala, their Dahaka, or their Falstad if they don't take Ragnaros. But again, you're giving it away to Misfits, which is, I feel like, a, a bit of a mistake. It's just Misfits has shown time and time again they know how to work around that hero and use him as a foundation for the next four slots. There's that Falstad from playing Ducks. Good call. Like it. Like it a lot. Um, they've been strong with that. Needless. Need we even say it uh, from previous day? So Misfits, Ragnaros and question mark. Yeah? Ragnaros, Ragnaros Tychus? And question mark. Uh, Ragnaros Tychus, Ragnaros could be ETC could be a thing. Ragnaros, yeah. uh, they actually don't need to get Zarya earlier. We've seen Misfits play Zarya in the past. And now that playing Ducks has their Falstad here, Sport Billy, they're probably not going to pick up Zarya. So that's kind of floating in my head for a little bit too. Um, so yeah, I think Ragnaros, Tychus, Ragnaros, ETC are my two choices. Even Ragnaros Malfurion, just to take it away from the playing Ducks because they ran a lot. They go Mafurian and Haka. Ragnar okay. is still floating for both teams. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I don't mind it at all, though. Um, clearly, these teams uh, and you know, Dahak, uh, sorry, uh, Europe as a whole, it, it's it's valuable. Like, don't sure. get us wrong. It's valuable. But there are things like the globals that you know we you know we were theorizing the false stats, the Dahakas. They're gonna come in. Malfurion is always viable uh, and valuable here. Because uh, of how much he has that support, but in the back line, he's he's top tier. I think does every, does everyone consider him the best support right now? Nefarian, I would assume so. We see him in terms of drafts. It feels like it. No one's come yeah. out and said he's the best, uh, but he's certainly up there. Um, so etc there, and there is a Tychus. Dahaka being taken away. Oh, actually, now that I think about it, with Dahaka being taken away, Nandes ran so much Dahaka lately. Maybe they want to see mm. what Nande would move into without the Dahaka. Um, so ETC gets picked up, and there's the Tychus, which still leaves them open for Ragnaros later on, and they can choose to elect to ban someone out here uh, that they don't want to deal with. With Falstad, ETC, and Tychus hmm. being in the mix-up for the playing Ducks. So the other things that we've seen Nanda on, I think he was on Leoric again in game one against B Genius uh, in the previous game. Sky Temple, though. It's not exactly the absolute go-to for Liaric. I mean, he's not bad by any means. It can work out. Um, but let's see what Misfits is going to go into ban-wise. Right wing? Ooh. 
Hovering the Brightwing, just stopping the combination of Falstad and Brightwing. Mm -hmm. uh, which indicates to me that they want to go for more sustained base comps, and they don't want to have that healing available for the playing ducks on the right side. So that band does look like it goes through. Back over to the playing ducks. What have they been here? Man, Dahaka and Malfurion is so good in so many different compositions. It's hard to find out what I would want to get rid of. Uh, do they, I, they have a choice for Rag here? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't even mind, though, if Misfits went Zarya Vala after this. Because they're very, very good with it, very proficient with it. Dark Monk would end up being on that Vala. Um, yeah. Oh, but playing Ducks, they're agonizing over it. They're like, are they going to pick up Ragnaros? Do we ban Ragnaros? What other things do we have to be fearful of? If they don't ban Rag, I could see Rag Zarya Vala being the composition for the Misfits. Um, and that would be actually quite strong, especially around this Temple phase, because we have the Rag Siege potential. Yeah, because Zarya Vala into Tychus, sorry, Zarya Dahaka into Tychus as your double warrior to stave off Tychus's massive potential against warriors, I think he's not too bad. Uh, we're gonna ban Muradin, okay. Hmm. So does Misfits move into the Ragnaros here? I feel like I'm lingering on this so much, but I just I feel like it's a comp that works out for them. Unless they're just trying to see if they can play, if they can win without Rag. I mean, maybe they think that they are so heavily favored they can go without it. All right, Misfits, what are you <laughs> doing, man? It's funny because after the first two games, I'm just like, all all my mind is just jumbled with weird thoughts and craziness. <laughs> that I'm like, I, I'm finding it hard to actually predict. The only thing that's kind of crazy if you pick Zarya is that Falstad does have good initiation. She uses yeah. a shield on herself, then Falstad goes in for the initiation, gets a mighty gust popped off, and then you have to kind of deal with the fight from there. Ragnaros Imperial okay. becomes a pickup, so they still get the shields, they still get the simplification. Uh, do they finish up with Greyman as their fifth pick here? They could. You see, I like Tyrael and Dahaka as well against Tychus. You do still want yourself uh, to have a two warrior setup, uh, even against Tychus. He just provides the ample firepower, but Tyrael's a warrior, doesn't have as much health, still has some sustainability uh, without having the highest health pool of all time out of warriors. So I do like that as a second warrior pickup. I'm looking at ducks here. Um, Tychus, false ad. They need the healer. Rhaegar could be the choice. Uh, Kerosene could actually work here too, mm. but it would be kind of hard with the roots and the Dahaka tongue. You wouldn't really get the attacks off that you would like. One There's a lot of poke from Ragnaros. Yeah, that's the, the one thing that I don't like about uh, Kerosene going into Ragnaros is that Q just gets more effectiveness because Kerosene yeah. always has to be in like melee range of his friends to actually heal themselves. So it kind of goes both ways. Yeah, you're getting a lot of healing as Karazine, but Ragnaros is getting a lot of healing. So Liaric comes out on the other side for playing Ducks. I do like that. Um, I think Liaric has... We, I was mentioning it at the beginning of this draft that Nande not having his access to Dahaka likes Liaric, uh, and that's what he's going to go to. So that's okay. And then Li Ming will be the final choice here for the Misfits. So now they get their poke that they would like to have. It's helpful against the York in particular as you're able to just get away from him and not have to deal with him going with the, uh, uh, as corrected on Twitter, the spooky hand. Spooky hand. Not drain hope. The spooky hand. There was many. Not only spooky hand, creepy hand. I was actually uh, incredibly uh, interested in how many people let us know that we were casting it incorrectly. So community wants to change the <laughs> spooky hand. Blizzard, you need to get on the same page here with this. You're right. Uh, so let's be real. But no, they have Misfits uh, with the leaving here. She can now poke down the Leo Work. They don't have to really deal with it too much. And then after it gets down to half health, you can get your engages with your Dahaka and your Tyrael. So it makes sense. I was thinking Val Vala in that last slot. And they could also go Grey Main. But with Leo Work being there, you just don't want to deal with that mm. hard engage in him getting a Drain Hope and then maybe getting in a Tomb follow up after that sanctification. So a uh, good pickup with the Leaming. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Just able to get out of that in Tomb, etc. and whatnot. So looking at this draft overall, I think that Misfits is still kind of in that position where they're going to feel very comfortable. Um, as much as game number one was a blip for them, um, they're they're in a really good spot. At the same time, victory. though, I, I feel like playing Ducks is in a comfortable scenario, too. Yep. Sport Billy, you be Sport Billy. We have our ETC. We have our engages whenever you go for the Mighty Gust. We have Chris on Tychus, who he did a phenomenal job the other day playing Tychus. And then you have your non in New York. So if he does get the pick off, mm. gets the isolation into a tomb, you have the Mighty Gust to push everyone else away, they can burn down a target. Obviously, Misfits is not going to allow that to happen. They're going to try and 
make sure to play around in the fights correctly, not to allow the isolation to occur. But if they do slip, playing Ducks does have a comp here that can make the play. Great. <laughs> awesome. He agrees with us. I do. <laughs> uh, so we're loading into the battleground here. We will go into Sky Temple. It will be our third game of the day. Now, do remember everyone is one and one right now. Uh, in terms of just actual outstanding looks outside of this matchup, Misfits is in the position here to take the lead in yep, the yep. HEC if they get this victory. And then uh, on the other side here, playing Ducks is trying to get in that middle of the pack. Get in the middle of the pack and can start working your way up. And I think they have uh, better chances to now throughout HGC Europe's phase one. Uh, yeah. After seeing how they were able to approach their previous series, you know, taking one game, yes, off Misfits in that little bit of a weird tomb, the Spider Queen game, but they are definitely my team. I, I had Team Expert as my team that was like, they're definitely the one to look for for challenging the big three. Yeah. Uh, but playing Ducks is, is turning heads. Definitely yeah, turning heads. They're turning into our Dark Horse. Can they take the series against the Misfits? We'll find out as we are going into Sky Temple. Remember, the series is tied 1-1 between our two teams. All righty. To the left-hand side. In the blue, we do have Misfits. It's going to be Splendor on Malfurion, Blumby on Tyrael, and we will have Dark Mark going to be on Ragnaros. Next up, it's Hasuobs on Li Ming, and finally, Nurok stealing away the Dahaka, just like he steals Essence. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> <laughs> to the far right, the playing Ducks. The red team here, we have Sport Billy showing off that B-step, but Wolf Joe will be showing off his Rhaegar. Chris Explosion with the ETC, and he had that crazy five-man mosh yesterday, mm. thanks to the Wolf Joe cleanse. Chris here on the Tychus, and finally Nande to show off the Leoric. All right, so hiding about. And free damage from tower, and walk away. So nothing's going to happen with that little uh, bush up towards the top, although it could leave the hacker in the dark no they're gonna walk into the tower range so it doesn't really matter i thought maybe they could try and find a rotation on towards the hacker uh via maybe gate and then walking up towards top temple but that's not to be as uh, Nurok, you look at his positioning he's playing very safe anyway yeah i think playing ducks is playing around the strong potential of misfits level one they have the root they have the tongue they have the reset potential just Laid it out, take the watchtower afterwards. Misfits does come back to the top though and starts to fight back for this vision as it can be key to holding that top lane. Oh, and we're starting things off for of playing Ducks with the creepy hand build. So I'm okay with that. As uh, against, you know, especially the hacker, if that can land uh, for Leoric. I think Nande is going to be in a very, very good spot for that. This is one of my favorite matchups to play, the Leoric versus Ragnaros. We talked about it a little bit yesterday, but Re Leoric actually did really well in that lane based on him hitting that drain boat. Uh, so we'll see if that will happen there yeah. as Dark Mock will be facing off against that skeleton. I think the two keys are hitting your Drain Hope and avoiding the Meteor for the most part. Like, you can you can anticipate the direction your opponent's Meteor is going to go and just kind of sidestep it. Yeah, step through it and go for the clear. Get yeah. the wave clear going and then put pressure on the Ragnar so you can't finish that Q build. Yeah, the weird thing is is that sometimes some heroes, like, the better choice is to actually walk forwards against the Meteor uh, into your opponent if you're a tankier guy, but looks like this fight's going to go down. Nero gets a great grab on towards Tychus at the back with the Brush Stalker. That's one for zero. That's first blood going over towards Misfits. And Hasuop taking that reset and applying pressure on that back line. All the playing ducks are forced to retreat here. Misfits also hit level four before their opponents. The Hawker will move in the middle here, grab some of that essence, and also make his way to the bottom lane here to deal with that Leoric, who did the right play. Once you realize your teammate has fallen victim to the opposing team, just push in your wave and get some kind of advantage there. Yeah, that was really, really well done. And now, Dahak has just gone towards the bottom whilst they soak up some more of these temple shots. And this is, this is a big problem now, because not only is uh, Misfits getting uh, the advantage and experience, but also eventually Brushstalker could come into effect up here. But this is the perfect time for uh, playing Ducks to actually punish when Brushstalker was on cooldown. So they get themselves a kill. They want to just back off for the moment. Uh, and because uh, Nurok is now here and about, and he'll be able to kill off somebody. 
Oh my gosh, Misfits <sighs> turns around here. Neurok gets engaged on Rhaegar, and Chris Plosion goes for the power slide, but has no mana to go for an escape, and he gets locked in that back left corner, and Misfits takes back the temple. Yeah, it was almost perfect. Like, they tried to exploit the window when uh, Brushstalker was down, but then they stuck around for just a little bit too long on the attempt to disengage uh, and get some more of those shots. If they'd have just backed off a bit quicker, then they would have been in a brilliant spot. And this is interesting. So playing Ducks a 3-0 with ETC. I think we saw a 5-0 on the side of Misfits with Ragnaros. So whoever loses this one on either side is going to become a statistical uh, victim. Going to break <laughs> those padded stats heavily here yep. in the first couple weeks of the ATC. <laughs> Uh, yeah, playing Ducks, remember the EC yesterday from Chris Plosion was just completely impactful in all their victories that they did have against their opponents. Mm. So, yeah, we'll keep an eye on ETC, but again, that strength of Ragnaros with Dark Mock on it and the Misfits using him cannot be ignored. Let's we'll see what happens when two unstoppable forces hit each other here in Sky Temple. Oh, yeah, and trust me, Ragnaros is an unstoppable force. He's great. No bias at all. <laughs> I'm not absolutely in love with Ragnaros. No, don't, don't <laughs> accuse me of that. You need to tease him. That's the thing. You have to make, make fun of him. That's how you <laughs> let him know you like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ugh, Ragnaros, God, you're so fiery. <laughs> oh. Oh. What is wrong with you? Stop melting things, Ragnaros. Stop it. Would you stop doing that? God, you're such a hothead. Yeah. Oh. I secretly like it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> the level 8 to level 7 here for Misfits, and they have taken a substantial lead with their kills and their soak on the experience here. Nurok really keeping up here with this Dahaka. Sport Billy at the same time trying to get some pressure in that top right as its team sets up for the mercenary camps on the right side. Normally, you will see it around this point here as you want to make sure you get that pressure in the top lane while the next Sky Temple phase does begin to spawn for our two teams. All right, so yeah, yeah, as you say, taking those hard camps now. Let's look at the builds as well. I just want to kind of uh, say, uh, make a point about Leoric's build more so than anything. So going for the Drain Hope build is actually very, very powerful for Leoric, but one of the most important talents for that Drain Hope build actually comes in a talent that's not even for Drain Hope, which is Paralyzing Range. So you sl get an increased slow on your Skeletal Swing, which means that your target is in range of your Drain Hope for longer and thus unable to connect it. So it's very, very strong for Leoric. Yeah, it's really a tool for chase control too. You get your fall static, start getting the auto attacks, Tyke is something as well. It just gives them two major CCs that slow the entire team down between Leoric's Q and now Rhaegar's Totem as well. Yeah. Especially at level 16 when he gets that upgrade. So uh, playing Duck's gonna have the ability to chase here like no other misfits. So already level 10, they have cleared the mercenaries in the top left. Dark Maw facing off in a 2v1 down here. That Drain Hope Ooh. going off. He goes for the Sphere Smash. Nurok here with the flank. Can't quite grab it, though. Nande has grabbed a few shots here on the right. He should be able to escape here with his Race Walk. Splinter, though, is here for the root. Did it connect it? No. Barely misses. A really good movement there from Nande. Considering he doesn't have the hardened uh, bones, so that his Wraith Walk's taking less, he's taking less damage whilst he's Wraith Walking. Uh, just to make sure he doesn't get rooted. Very nice. Nurok. Lurking in the bushes, what Dahaka does best. Just back off for the moment as level 10s are here now for Playing Ducks. And two and Moshpit will be the openers here for the Playing Ducks. So watching Nande, watching Chris Explosion. Yeah. Falstad is in the bottom left, it will drop the mighty gust. Lumby is trying to keep him kited here on the right. He flies, or uses his fly ability, will pop away, but that is the opening here for Chris Explosion to be grabbed with the oh, Twilight no Dream rocks. and the Tongue, and there is no longer an ETC on the field. Yeah. As much as there's respect between them, no love loss as Nurok B steps after the, the tongue into the Twilight Dream. The Twilight Dream is super important in that instance because they do not want a Mosh randomly landing on them while they're grouping around to kill the ETC. So very, very important there for Misfits. And they grab the rest of the shots of the temple. They now have a four down the bottom right. Pressure already in the middle. Now the Misfits keeping up with their pressure. They're going to go ahead and keep soaking as Nurok is in the uh, top already pushing down the fort. And this opens up the Misfits to grab map control. They literally can grab whatever they would like right now, except probably the boss with the Mighty Gust being available. But they can just keep pushing up, keep everything blue. And if Misfits continues this pressure they put on the battleground, I see the playing Ducks having a really hard time setting up for a fight. Yeah, it might be. As Taka looks to just kind of continue clearing up towards the top, the easy camps at the bottom are going to clash, and there was a moment there where playing Ducks were waiting to capture there, so I thought they were going to go and clean that up and then allow this to push a bit harder, but they've just left it alone. 
an attempt on towards Blumby because the Ariel Durin's might. He's going to use it and he will be able to get away for a moment. Yes, he gets away fully. Wow, incredible that he was actually able to get away from that fight. Li Ming is oh. actually set to the back right corner. And Dark Muck lands a severe smash on top of the Falstead head. And Sport Billy is taken out for 20 seconds here. Hasselhoff and Dark Muck, yeah, doing a, a number there on poor Falstead. Not easy for him to do much at all. And that's that's really the power of Sulfurous Smash. It can be a finisher uh, in a, some of the most crazy circumstances because of the range on it. Well, especially with Falstead not having the added movement speed after Hasuwa poked him down, it's much easier to line up that hit yes, too, especially yes. on Falstead. With him being so squishy, so Dark Monk taking that opportunity, securing the takedown, and that will be the second fort of the game awarded to Misfits. Misfits have just turned it on now. I mean, in these last two games, you can see they've gone for more standard compositions on their side. Hasuwa's really wants that fort. He'll get it in a moment. Uh, so that's fine for them. There it is. Oh, Billy. I will roll away. The temples have now activated. What? Playing Ducks, realizing that there was three in the top, has started grabbing the boss. Nande, the first to lead it, but Splendor is on his way down here to sniff it out. So, they have Gust, but Sanctification is on the other side. Sanctification wins out this, and he's going to go on towards it. They're taking a big risk here. And he already he used Eldruin's might blinks on the Hasuob, saving time! Oh, great moves here by Misfits with Hasuob's making a point of that. Really good stuff. Hasuob's, man, we talked about the leaning we saw yesterday, but Hasuob's is just going, and it gets another what? kill with the wave of force poke there. Yeah. And Misfits is Hasuob's is insane on this character. Incredible job there, as unfortunately Blumby was mighty gusted away from the fight. He saves it with pure guts. Uh, in fact, they might actually just get this core uh, keep and then push on. You can already see them positioning very aggressively. Darmok is in a spot where if this keep falls, then he could easily get Molten Core very fast. Oh, oh. Let's get the ATC game blown up! Oh my god! The boss is still at so much health! Dark Buck with the casual sidestep of the power slide into Neurox's tongue there. Get to kill on ETC and now with Ragnaros here. Besieging down with fire. Neurox is in, gonna keep pushing here onto the core. So Fierce Mush goes out, but Sports Billy will be able to dodge it. But Nande dead as well. This boss is still healthy here, half health. And Splendor still has half of his mana as well, so they can easily finish this off. What a push on through. It felt like playing Ducks were a little bit desperate with that. That boss called and it was stolen. What a play. That is GG 2 1. That's the power of a good Li Ming player swinging the fight there. First off, incredible job from Hoswops getting on top of the boss there just to prevent the grab there uh, yeah. with the Entomb. I mean, I think we can actually take a look at it again. Let's do it. Uh, Let's check it out. Because overall, it's very rare that you get to see the chance uh, for a, a, a wizard as such, a squishy wizard, to be able to save this. So, Gust will come out. Watch Hasuob's up. Didn't get hit by the Gust. So he blinks, saves the precious seconds necessary for then the Eldruin's Might and the uh, ultimately the Sanctification to help that. So not hitting Incredible. Hit, not hitting Li Ming with the Gust, uh, and then him actually blinking on there with not any more damage, uh, only ETC on that point to really respond to the Li Ming. Yeah. Because what happens is, as a Tyrael, you throw your Eldruin's Might on, and then oftentimes the opposing team will say, Eldruin's Might's there, damn, we don't want to finish the boss just yet, so they stop damage on it. Yeah. And they did that for a moment. So then the Eldruin's Might times out, and then it's like, oh, what do we do, what do we do? Uh, but great play by Hasselhoff, absolutely MVP of that game. Hasselhoff's playing a layer higher in terms of levels there. What a wonderful play for him, but we're going to get ready for game number four. We'll be right back. This is the HGC.